Hello and welcome back. In this video I'll show you with the help of an example how the inverse transform method from the previous video can be used in practice. Let's jump straight in. Here is the result. If we want to generate samples for the CDF capital F, then what we can do is we generate standard uniform, transform that by applying F inverse and the result has the correct distribution. So let's do an example. So let's say we do exponential distribution with parameter lambda. Step one is we need to find CCDF. That's a bit of a step because normally we are only given the probability density. So f of x, the density is lambda e to the minus lambda x for positive x and the exponential distribution never takes negative value so it's zero for x less than zero. And from that we can work out capital F, CCDF, f of a, is the probability of the exponential distributed random variable being less than or equal to a. And from the density we can get the probability by integrating. So we integrate over the whole range we want to cover, so minus infinity up to a. Then we integrate the density over this range to get the probability of x being in the range. That is one of the rules for probabilities. If you need a reminder about this, there is a very short refresher about probability in Appendix A. And in particular, that specific result I just used, you can find in definition A.2 on page 264. Good, but here let's just go on. We plug in F and solve the integral. So we don't need to integrate negative values because here F is zero and it doesn't contribute to the integral. So we integrate from zero to A. The function we integrate is lambda e to the minus lambda x dx. And exponentials are always easy to integrate. We need a primitive of that and it turns out the primitive is minus e to the minus lambda x. Because if I take the derivative of this function, then the exponential is its own derivative. So the outer derivative is e to the minus lambda x. And the inner derivative, the derivative of minus lambda x gets a minus lambda. So we get minus minus lambda e to the minus lambda x which is lambda e to the minus lambda x as required. So if I take the derivative, I get back the function I'm integrating. So I need to just take this in the limits from x equals zero to a. So we have minus e to the minus lambda a minus minus e to the minus lambda zero, which is one. So the whole result is one minus e to the minus lambda a. So that's the CDF. So at a equals zero, we have one minus e to the zero is zero. And for everything smaller, we also have zero because we don't take negative values. And then e to the minus lambda a decays from one to zero. So one minus this increases from zero to one and the increase gets slower and slower. So it will look like this approximately and the value it approaches and never quite reaches is one. Okay, so here we see there are no complications, no jumps, no flat bits. So what we can do is we can just use the usual inverse. So if x is here and u is here, then we have u is f of x is 1 minus e to the minus lambda x. That is from here. So we just solve for x. We get e to the minus lambda x equals 1 minus u. Now it takes the log minus lambda x equals log 1 minus u. And finally I divide by minus lambda, so I get x equals minus log 1 minus u divided by lambda. Good. And now we know what to do. We generate u random standard uniform and plug it into this formula and the x will be exponentially distributed. So let's try that out. We first need to generate a number of standard uniformly distributed random variables. Let's say we do 100,000 for now, and then we can just use u is assigned r unif n to get our uniformly distributed random numbers. Now we need to choose lambda, say we take two. And then we need to apply the inverse of the CDF to the u values. And we know that is minus logarithm of one minus u over lambda, like this. And if we did it right, the x are now exponentially distributed with parameter two. So to check, we do a histogram. I make that a bit nicer. So I remove the title. I make the margins a bit smaller. And instead of counts, I try to plot probabilities. So frequency, if true, gives frequencies. That's what I've had. 
and if not then I get probability densities and probability can be used as an alias for not frequency so I think I can just do probability is true and that seems to have worked so that looks reasonable now to check whether we really got the exponential distribution we should plot the density of the exponential distribution there so our histogram goes from 0 to 7 so for plotting a line I need to choose x values for plotting the line so I go from 0 to 7 in 100 steps and I plot a line which has the x values from 0 to 7 and the density of the exponential distribution is dx so I'll do that and I believe rate is lambda so we put in lambda here and that seems a reasonable match to make that a bit clearer I change the histogram to have more bars so breaks is say 50 and I make the line red and you see that really looks like a good fit so the samples we had seem to be really exponentially distributed and the method worked as planned and it was not actually difficult to do I spent most of the time here to adjust the picture which I only used for checking let's try that once more and just for comparison to lambda equals 0.5 then you see the plot looks actually the same because of some scaling property of the exponential distribution but the x-axis range now goes up to 20 so I should actually have written max x here to make that a bit nicer now the red line extends all the way to the right but the fit is rather good and that is how you do the inverse transform method in R that's what we have done